Hi everyone, my name is Dr. Alan Penzias and I'm a reproductive endocrinologist at Boston IVF. I'm joined today by Dr. Dennis Vaughn, a reproductive endocrinologist and the director of clinical research here at Boston IVF. With COVID-19 vaccine thankfully being rolled out more and more, we wanted to take a moment to talk about what the vaccine means for individuals and couples currently undergoing treatment or those considering future care and even those who are pregnant. We've received many questions on this topic and feel a discussion would be very helpful for everyone. So Dr. Vaughn, can you tell us what is happening with Boston IVF and the recommendations for vaccination and pregnant patients? Sure, um, I think first and foremost, the most important take home message is that we as reproductive endocrinologists are strongly recommending vaccination for everyone. Um, there are of course some exceptions and there will always be individual um, issues or potentially medical conditions that may preclude pe people or patients from getting vaccinated, but um, those should be discussed with the patient's primary care doctors or clinical um, staff um, taking care of those patients. But by and large, the overwhelming majority of patients um, should be encouraged to receive the vaccine. Um, I think that as a reproductive endocrinologist, the two main questions that we tend to get, or at least that I get in my office, are um, how does it affect um, fertility as a whole? How does it affect the treatment course of infertility, particularly around an IVF cycle? And then lastly, um, how safe is it in pregnancy? Um, and what we really want to do is to reassure patients that there is emerging data, obviously this is a relatively new vaccine, but there is the first mRNA vaccine was, um, the clinical trial started in 2006, and so this is not um, brand new, it has been around for a while. Um, there is no data to suggest that there is any negative impact on patients' fertility, and so um, I would really do want to ally fears in that regard. Um, specifically around treatment course itself. We do know that there are potential side effects of the vaccine, particularly the second dose of the vaccine. And so um, it's not that getting the vaccine in treatment is going to affect the treatment itself or affect the outcomes of treatment, but that during treatment, patients may develop a fever or aches or myalgias or um, potential side effects, particularly related to the second shot um, and it can be dif difficult for us um, to differentiate those side effects from um, infectious uh, symptoms. And so for those reasons um, at Boston IVF, we are urging patients to be a little more cautious leading up to the start of an IVF cycle, about one week before an IVF cycle and during an IVF cycle, um, because it may affect our ability to perform an egg retrieval, for example. Um, and again, not that it affects their, the likelihood of success of IVF or anything along those lines. It's really just about the symptoms related to the second shot of the vaccine. So it's a little, little challenging in that regard. Yeah, and it sounds like uh, the types of questions that I'm getting as well, because you know I'm giving the recommendation as you are, that all of our patients who can get the shot should. And in terms of the timing, the little bit of a fine point here is just, you know, making sure that somebody doesn't get screened out from coming in when they have an appointment. So that, you know, we just want to make that very clear that we are recommending it for everybody. Now, what about the patients that you have who now newly find themselves pregnant? And um, what, what do you tell them? Are you asking them if they haven't gotten their vaccine during the course of treatment because they didn't want to get a, a fever. Now they've just had an embryo transfer, for example, or just found out that they're pregnant. How are you advising those women? And what are you telling them about uh, what we know about the safety of, uh, of the vaccine versus the risks of COVID? Yeah, good question. Um, again, you know, we are gathering more data about this all the time, but from the initial trials, um, from both the Moderna vaccine, the Pfizer vaccine, um, AstraZeneca in the in the UK, um, there were patients, you know, even though pregnant women were um, initially excluded from those trials, there were patients that inadvertently became pregnant, and data was reassuring from there were between those three trials, I think there were 57 patients 
um, that were inadvertently pregnant and there were no negative um, impacts or, or side effects of the vaccine itself on pregnancy. And since um, even since those trials, now we have through the CDC, we have vSafe, um, which is a tracking mechanism. Um, and I do urge that our patients log on to vsafe.cdc.gov, um, register if you're planning on getting the vaccine, and it just helps us track um, side effects of the vaccine and outcomes related to the vaccine. But up until this point, um, over 50,000 pregnant women have been vaccinated. Um, and the latest data that we have is that 275 uh, women have completed their pregnancy um, following a vaccine. And again, no, no detrimental or negative effects have been seen specifically related to the vaccine on the pregnancy. And so for that reason, the American Co um, Congress of Obstetricians and Gynecologists have come out and stated categorically that the vaccine should not be withheld from pregnant patients. And, and that's the message that I'm giving my patients is that pregnant patients, um, as long as, again, there's no obvious medical contraindication, they should go ahead and absolutely receive the vaccine if and when they uh, meet criteria and qualify. And in fact, the American Society for Reproductive Medicine, ASRM, has taken it a step further and is actively recommending vaccination because we know that for an individual, their course of COVID will be based on their own personal physiology and a number of other factors. But if you take that same individual and they are pregnant, their course of COVID is gonna be much worse, particularly in the second and third trimester. So the theoretical risks of a vaccine versus the known risks of actually the bad course of COVID that you might be in pregnancy would seem to favor getting people vaccinated. Now, uh, Dr. Vaughn, when you when you talk to patients and there may be some vaccine hesitancy, um, kind of how do you address that uh, among people who are a little bit concerned, and and what do you talk to them about? Well, I think the first thing is it's it's important to acknowledge that again this is a relatively new vaccine, and so inevitably people are going to be a little reluctant or a little nervous about receiving the vaccine. But again, um, what I'd said a little bit earlier is that research has been ongoing in this field of, of mRNA vaccines for almost 20 years now. Um, and to get any vaccine to market, we have to go through uh, preclinical and then clinical trials, you know, with um, different phases, phase one, two, and three, to, te to test both, both the safety and the e efficacy of the vaccine. Um, and all of those same steps are being followed um, by the drug companies and being closely monitored for side effects. Um, and so I think it's important to acknowledge that while it is a new vaccine, um, I think it's super important, as I said, to emphasize that all the same safety measures and metrics are being followed, the same safety protocols are being followed before these um, vaccines are even getting to market. Um, and just try to educate um, patients and, and, and our own staff as much as possible. Yeah, and I think that your comment about uh, validating the concerns of those who are hesitant rather than dismissing them is really important because people do have real fears, but being able to debunk just absolute flat out falsehoods is really number one and very important. Educating people who are maybe hesitant and just not giving up on them and continuing to educate is really important. And I think that one of the other nice things is that at this point now, uh, one in nearly one in four Americans has had at least one dose of the vaccine with more than 29 million in mid-March uh, who are now fully vaccinated. And as a result of that, one of the nice things that I sort of use as a selling point in terms of those who may be a little bit he hesitant is that the CDC has now changed some of the recommendations in that fully vaccinated people are now permitted to visit with other fully vaccinated people indoors without wearing masks. And there's some, some caveats around that, but really to be able to help restore the fabric of our society and family relationships and friendships once we're fully vaccinated, I think is a really big uh, selling point overall. I think one question um, I think that I get quite a lot and, and maybe I'll, I'll pose this to you, Dr. Penzias, is that, um, Pa patients and staff, even amongst our staff here at Boston IVF, are g 
getting a little bit worked up about which vaccine they get and they're questioning oh you know i signed up for the pfizer vaccine or i'm receiving the moderna vaccine or i'm receiving the johnson johnson vaccine how do you talk to patients and staff about the different types of vaccines um how effective they all are um how do you kind of approach that topic because i do find that that tends to be a source of confusion and and some drama amongst our, our staff now that's a that's a great question and i think that it really kind of comes back to two different terms that you hear so the efficacy of a vaccine is how it performs in a clinical trial and the effectiveness of a vaccine and how is how it works in the real world and whether it's a 92% or a 72% or 82% really is not something that I would focus on at all, because anytime you have the opportunity to get a vaccination is a good day. And we know that just to recap, there are three vaccines that are currently being used in the United States under FDA emergency use authorization, the EUA, the Pfizer, BioNTech, and Moderna, which are mRNA va vaccines that require two doses spaced three to four weeks apart, and the Johnson & Johnson, which is a DNA uh, vaccine base um, introduced with an adenovirus, which is a single dose, and within two weeks of either the single dose or the second dose, uh, vaccine is considered to be effective. What's really astonishing is how the death rate, the hospitalization rate, and the um, uh, severe disease has been almost eliminated by every one of these vaccines. So whether it's 72% or 94% uh, efficacy or, if, or, or the effectiveness of the vaccine is astonishing in the real world. And that's why we're seeing so many cases uh, of hospitalization going way down and deaths are dropping dramatically. Every death, of course, is uh, significant and until it's zero, you know, we won't be satisfied. But that's why I'll tell any of my patients and staff and friends and family, if you have an opportunity to get the vaccine, get it. And I think it's it's exciting that even in Massachusetts, I think we're upwards of 30% now who've gotten at least one dose of the vaccine, um, which bodes well, especially as the weather's getting better, um, people are getting outside. Get, I think things are looking a lot more positive uh, for the summer for you know staff and patients alike. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, in terms of our, my own family, I got the Pfizer, my wife got the Moderna, my parents got the Pfizer, my daughter got the AstraZeneca in the UK, and my future daughter-in-law got Johnson & Johnson. So we're covering all the bases <laughs> in our household. So we are definitely voting with our feet and voting with our arms to get that, uh, that vaccine. Um, any last uh, comments that you have uh, with respect to the vaccine and, and what you would want to send people away thinking about? Um, you know, I think this has been a particularly difficult year for our patients. At the peak of the pandemic, we closed down for nine weeks um, and we were unable to treat patients um, for uh, infertility, which was incredibly stressful for all of us. Um, and I think that, you know, we've been busier than ever since, since we've started treating patients with pa more and more people getting vaccinated. I think that, um, we're, we know that the asymptomatic infection rates are much lower, so we think that the carrier rates are much lower. And so I think that overall, the, the single biggest thing is just to really emphasize and reiterate the, um, the strong safety data behind the vaccine to try to get as many people out to get vaccinated as possible so that we can all try to get back to, to some sort of normalcy. And let's reach that herd immunity sometime soon. So thanks very much for participating today. And we hope that everybody who's taking a look found this helpful and, and useful. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out for us. And um, we look forward to seeing you on another uh, broadcast. Take care. Have a good evening. Bye-bye.